So I'm guessing that you're here because you want to see how to refinish and fix up an old workbench. Luckily for you, I just happened to have finished one myself. Let's take a look right now. One a week earlier. I need to clean. Um, I'm always cleaning, but today's video doesn't have to do with cleaning the stuff. It has to do with what's under the stuff. So give me one second, I'll be right with you. Underneath this pile of tools and projects is my absolute favorite piece of furniture. It's Grandpa Bill's workbench that he built in 1953 when they moved into their Rosedale house in Queens, New York. Now, I like this guy so much that I named my son after him. Grandpa Bill, Bill is short from William, William's ending is Liam, Liam is my five-year-old son's first name. I was lucky enough to have salvaged this piece from my grandmother's basement before she sold her house. Then it lived in my parents' garage for quite a few years until I purchased my house, and now it's one of my prized possessions. I always forget how much stuff is in my shop. I wish I could show you. Huh. <laughs> it's a video camera, I can show you. <clears throat> As you can see, it's a total mess. There's stains all over it, marks all over it, dings and dents, but honestly, I don't really mind them. It was only when this started coming up and getting on all my work that I knew I had to refinish it. I have no idea what this is, but every time I put wood or paper or anything down on it, it leaves a mark. Okay, so I gotta tell you, over the course of shooting this over a week, I lost some footage. I have no idea where, I have no idea how, but I'm gonna be popping back into the video to explain the missing portions as this goes on, and I'll be doing so in very entertaining ways, like talking to you, or drawing pictures, or singing you songs. I hope you enjoy it. Where were we now? So the piece that's missing is the idea that I don't want to lose the story of this table. I don't want to cut it down to bare wood and refinish it because there's 66 years of history in this table. Marks and cuttings and hammer marks that I want to keep. They're part of the story. I'm all about the story. There's this really cheesy song that keeps being played in my head when I look at this table while I was working on this project, and I know it sounds dumb, believe me. It's by a vocal artist named Brandy Carlisle, I think, and I think it's called Your Story. And the line that always runs through my head is, All of these lines across my face tell you the story of who I am. So many stories of where I've been and how I got to where I am. That's that's it. That's that's it. Instead of taking a planer and taking it down to bare wood, I want to use some sandpaper and just take off just what's necessary so I don't lose the story, I don't lose the marks, and we'll refinish from there. Let's get into that. So, perfect way to get into my Makita, my new sander. This is my Makita 5-inch random or no, that's the case. This is my Makita 5-inch Random Orbit Sander. Having this tool will make sanding this workbench vastly easier than trying to do it by hand. But the first thing I'm gonna do is grab a chisel and try to take all the superficial glue marks up off of the workbench. I also wanna go through and find any metal bits that are sticking out and make sure those are removed as well so they don't hurt either the sander or future projects. I then put on my respirator and earplugs and went at the table with 100 grit sandpaper. Now 100 grit was perfect for what I needed because it's fine enough that it won't dig into the table. It gives me the opportunity to really take it down one layer at a time and see what I want to save. As I'm going over the table sanding it, I'm finding some areas with divots and dings and dents and holes, and anything that I want to fill, I'm going to be using DAP plastic wood for. Uh, this is a very simple product to use and very effective. Dry time is super quick and it sands just like wood. All you're going to do to use this is grab a putty knife, scoop some out into the hole, and squish it in, make sure it's good and deep in there so that when it dries up, it's a nice solid bond. Then move on to the next one, rinse and repeat as many times as you need. While the wood filler is drying and I am sanding down the rest of the table to 100 grit, I'm gonna take this opportunity to remind you to click subscribe if you're enjoying this, and if you're enjoying this, maybe hit that little thumbs up button below. I also noticed when I was going around these little pieces of the table that were sticking out now that it had settled, so I grabbed my pull saw, which I'll do a whole video about one of these days, and just cut it off. Now this isn't the only reason I'm showing you this footage. Look at the table shake. It's super wobbly, but don't worry, we'll end up fixing that later on in the episode. Yeah. 
All right, let's do this. We are ready for day two because I have had two cups of this already. We have a lot of sanding to do. That actually won't take so long because you have the magic of videography. We'll sand off the wood filler in any areas we haven't gotten yet with 100 grit sandpaper. We'll then switch to 120 grit sandpaper and do the whole table and then go to 220 grit sandpaper and do the whole thing all over again. Now that we have it sanded up to 220, uh, we're gonna do something counterintuitive, and that is to wait. I know it sounds crazy, but I'm gonna turn off all the fans, turn off the air conditioners, let the air slow down, and let the dust settle out of it. So something else that I absolutely love that might be crazy to some of you if you've never done it before is feeling the wood after you've climbed the ladder, they say, of grits. We went from 100 to 120 to 220. The wood feels so smooth, it's a little absurd. Let's hurry up now and wait. Well, not for you. I mean, for you, it's gonna be instant because it's a video, but I'm gonna go have a cup of coffee. I'll be back. It's time for a coffee break, yeah. A few hours has gone by, and now it's time to get all the dust that settled out of the air off of the table. Now, my initial idea was just to vacuum it up, try to be efficient, but I realized that the outflow of air from the vacuum will just kick up more dust in the room, and that'll work against us. So. I came up with the idea to just have a cotton towel that's a little bit damp, not wet at all, just damp. And that way when I go over the table with it, it'll take all the dust up and we'll be ready to go on. Now's the moment that I've been waiting for for quite some time, and that is to get the finish and sealer onto this table because it's when the wood really, really looks gorgeous. Now what I'm gonna be using is Waterlocks Original. Um, the can looks gross and squished because after every time you use it, you need to get as much air out of the can as you can or it'll react with what's inside of it and make this gel, gross, yucky stuff. Uh, now unfortunately for myself, the day after I got it about a year ago, I lost the cap, but what I've been using ever since is gaffer's tape on the top which sticks to just about everything um, and that's been working absolutely fine no gelling no craziness inside I'm also gonna be using a t-shirt that I ripped up let's get to it I can't wait to see this now I wish there was a little bit more of a oh my god that's so amazing kind of moment here but there kind of isn't um, this table drank up the finish every time I put it down when I looked somewhere else and I looked back it was already soaked into the wood so I made sure to put on a really heavy coat. Remember, this is a 66-year-old table that I know has not been waxed or refinished or really taken care of all that much in that entire time. And while that's true, if you look here, the honey tones that are coming out of this wood with just one coat of the finish are absolutely beautiful. Day three, and we're putting on the second coat. It's 26 hours after the first coat. You have to wait a minimum of 24 to make sure that that coat cures completely before you can put on the next one. And please note that this time I'm wearing gloves because the first day I learned the lesson the hard way. It took forever to get that stuff off my hands. After applying coat two, we had to apply coat three. And I didn't film that at all because it's the exact same thing as coat two with only one difference. Before applying the third coat, I sanded the table once again with 220 grit sandpaper very lightly along with the grain. I then took a cotton towel and buffed the table down to make sure there was no dust left and then went on to applying coat number three which went on exactly like coat number two and then I got to wait another 24 hours before applying the paste wax. Even more later. Paste wax is exactly that. It's a wax that when you put it on something, protects it from liquids. And I hear that it's wonderful for workbenches, so I figured why not? Putting it on is ultra simple. You take double low steel wool and apply it to the entire table along with the grain. Then you wait a few hours for it to become hazy. You then go back with ultra fine steel wool and buff it off the table along with the grain as well. Until there's no signs of visible wax coming off anymore onto the steel wool. I love it. I'll be honest with you, there was a point when I was sanding stuff where I was like, is this even worth it? And of course, like, it is. It was my grandfather Williams. Yeah. And this honey color is awesome. Uh, again, that wasn't on there until really the wax was done. It's got this, it's just beautiful. And it's so imperfect. It's wonder. I, I love, I'm, I'm in love with this table. So I think you get it. 
The table's gorgeous. It really did honestly take till the end of the waxing process for that honey color to come out, and I absolutely cannot tell you, like the, the camera doesn't do it justice. Now I know we said that we were also gonna talk about how to take the wobble out of the table, and we will, but that's gonna be next week's video. This is gonna be a bit of a, a mini series, if you will. If you haven't subscribed yet and you're still here, well that's nuts, because if you watch this all the way through, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you enjoyed it, you might as well subscribe. Subscription is free and it does help the channel immensely and I appreciate it like crazy. I hope to see you guys next week, Wednesday at four o'clock. If not, then I'll see you some other time. Take care guys. Thank you for being here with me. Be well.